welcome to D-Lab's basic training series. In this series, we address common problems and give you quick solutions. But I want to tell you guys a little story first. So here, next to me, we have a tube caddy. And you can see the name Fred is on the caddy. So for a little history, when I was growing up, there was a TV repair shop in a little town called Bedford. My dad and I would go up there every so often and visit the guy. His name was Fred Cady. Fred was a ham radio operator and he had just all these cool projects in this little shop in the middle of Bedford. I would go in there and I'm telling you what guys, I was in heaven. I looked around, saw these piles of projects and parts everywhere. I was like, man, that's what I want to do. That's what really got it into my system. So now, in tribute to Fred Cady, we are going to use the Fred Caddy. And inside of the Caddy will be the subject matter for the new D-Lab basic training. So let's open it up, see what we got today. Okay, Fred, what is our basic training subject for the day? It appears as though Fink is trying to hide the data from me. So today, we have a Fender Basement Amplifier. It's the model AB165. The output tubes are running hot. You can actually feel the heat radiating off of them. The bias adjustment appears to make no difference. So here's three things for you guys to consider while I'm going through the amp. Is it the output tubes? Is it a power supply issue? Or is it outdated technology? So keep that in mind. I'm going to get Fred out of the way and we're going to test the basement. All right, so our situation is the output tubes are running pretty hot. So we know we probably have a bias issue. Now in its original configuration, there is no way to actually measure the bias in this amplifier. What they had was a balance pot, okay? So it actually was not adjustable bias, it would actually swing the bias back and forth across the output tubes and they wanted you to listen to your speaker and adjust for minimum hum. It's the same type of system that you see in many of the Fender Twins, okay? So to make this easier, I have already installed some 1 ohm current sensing resistors so that we can look at the bias on each tube, okay? So it's a one ohm resistor, so one ohm would be one milliamp, all right? So we'll get on this guy first, and I'm gonna turn on the high voltage, and we'll look at the meter. So you see we got about 41 millivolts, so 41 milliamps going through that tube. And if we go over here, get a good connection, we also have about 42 milliamps. So if it was an imbalanced situation, you would adjust the pot and you'd adjust these for the same bias. But like I said before, there was no way to actually see the bias because they didn't have any current sensing resistors. So to perform this today, you would have to use one of those external bias adapters, okay? So this is why I routinely put in these resistors, but that does not solve the problem we're still seeing over 40 milliamps of idle current on the 6L6s. That's pretty high. So with this bias balance system, you can only adjust bias on one tube to make it equal to the other. So you see we have 42 mils there. Go over here, and we can adjust this guy to be the same. But all you're doing at that point is adjusting bias voltage on each of the tubes. You have no idea what that current is. So this is a bad situation. What I'd highly recommend is that you abandon this old bias balance system and put in a variable bias system. And that is what they used to have on the AA165 amplifier. Let me show you the diagram. All right, I just pulled these prints off the web for your reference if you want to see a better representation Take a look at the real schematics, okay? So here is the AB165, and that's what we have installed in this basement. 
So you can see there's one 100K resistor here that's feeding a fixed negative bias to one output tube. The other side goes through this little balancing network they have. So you're swinging this negative 45 volts back and forth and try to equalize the voltage on the output tubes. Whereas if you look over here on the AA165, now you have two of the 220K resistors and your bias pot actually adjust the negative voltage so you can actually dial in the current for your output tubes. This is a much better system. The only drawback is is you have to have a pretty close match pair of tubes because you're only adjusting the current at one point which is going to both tubes. Alright so the game plan is guys I'm gonna reconfigure this old bias system to a variable bias system. So it's a simple matter of rearranging a couple of resistors on the current pot and adding the 220K resistors that feed the output tubes. So the reason for this problem is not because of a power supply issue or a tube issue, it's technology. Back in the day when Fender designed these amps, the line voltage was say at 115 volts AC. Now it is up around 123 volts AC, so all the power supplies have increased, which threw the bias out on these tubes. So it's a really good idea to be able to control the current through your output tubes so that you don't smoke them or wear them out too quickly, especially with the price of tubes these days. I've completed the reconfiguration of the bias system now. It is variable. These are the components that were removed from the old system. So now let's take a look at the current through the output tubes. Remember in this case when I adjust the bias both tubes will adjust. So you see we've got 31 milliamps on that tube whereas that one is only 21 so there's a 10 milliamp difference between the tubes. So if I were to adjust the bias on this one Say I want to bring him up, at the same time, this tube is increasing. The reason for that is, is our tubes are not matched. So this amp will require a matched pair of 6L6s and then that bias will settle down. Alright, I removed the old tired 6L6s and replaced them with a matched pair of Mullards. So now let's fire up the amp and see what our bias looks like and see how equal they are between tubes. There will be a difference, but hopefully not 10 milliamps. So there, here's my current. So we'll just set it, say, at 30. Okay. Now we'll flip the lead over to the other tube. Let's see what we got over there. See there? We're only about one milliamp difference now between tubes. With the old bias system, it would have masked the imbalance and your amp would have sounded terrible. A good matched pair of tubes makes all the difference on these amps. Alright everybody, there you have it. Another great D-Lab basic training session on common guitar amplifier problems. Presented by Terry and Fred. Is this information what you guys want? Do you want me to continue? Tell me what you think. 